Talo Falaba, and welcome to another segment of Cocoa Bites, where we keep your cup of Coco Samoa rich and full of innovations and creativity from American Samoa's tech community. I am Ginger Lee Porter with my co host, Michael McDonald. Talo Falaba, Michael. Talo for Ginger. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing today? Good, good. How are you? I'm doing great. Doing great. Well, we've made a lot of progress so far, right? So um, we've been, you know, since since we launched the American Samoa Territorial Broadband Strategy, I think we've we've gained a lot of traction and a lot of interest, right? Curiosity, so to speak, um, from right. people, right? Uh, on what 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 are you guys doing? What's what's this? What's Coco Bites? What's Tala Tech? Um, right. <laughs> yeah. So, what have you been hearing on your side? Yeah, no, very much the same thing. You know, I, I was surprised. Uh, you know, at the uh, uh, response, really, uh, after the first show, people were stopping me. You know, hey, you know, I saw your Coco show. You know, and uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but it has generally been pretty positive. I, I think uh, uh, people are, are curious about uh, the same things that we're curious about. What, what do we do now with? Um, with a broadband now that we have it you know again aside from the obvious stuff how do we really uh, um, you know generate some uh, creativity and some innovation uh, so that we can you know do a lot more uh, so so the, the feedback has been uh, pretty positive so far so um, I think we should keep going a little bit longer right <laughs> oh yeah absolutely consistency you know that presence and visibility right and right. so you know you know there's a, a whole big a market or or a, a group right that that we want to capture as part of this and that's young people right and we're excited right. to see where young people can take this technology and this resource um, and so today's guest you know is a young person who's who's making a difference out there you know a bright a Samoan and then you know it's it's really it's really nice to hear these stories about young people taking advantage of the resources and opportunities that are there. So I'm excited to bring on our guests. I'm excited too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let me just bring, bring them in, in and then we can, let, I, I'm just going to bring them right in. And then we can continue to have this conversation about young people and the use of technology, right? So, oh, there he goes. Hi, right. Sunny. Hey, it's Alofa. Hey, guys. Alofa. Well, welcome, welcome to to Coco Bites. Awesome, it's a pleasure to be on your guys' show. Yeah, so, so Michael and I are just um, starting to talk about um, this energy that young people bring, right, to the use of technology and to the use of uh, Hawaii and just knowing what's out there. So, um, you know, I think you have a, a really great story to share. So I'm just going to go right ahead and ask you off the top right now uh, to tell us a little bit about yourself, right? So tell us your story as a young person who's out here um, and doing what you're doing. So share. Tell yeah. us. Should I start with just what I'm doing currently or go back to the... Actually, I think I want to go back. I want to go back to, you know, not, not the far past, but, you know, just wh wh where, where did you go to school? What high school? And tell us, tell us about yourself. Okay. So, well, I'm just a, another kid from Pango. Um, my mom's from the mainland. Uh, my, dad, my dad's from Pango, but we have some, some links to Fangasa. So, <clears throat> but uh, anyways, I went to school at uh, Matafao Elementary for a couple of years and then Marmalo. Um, oh, boo-hoo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then uh, some wound up for high school. And then and after that, I left for college and uh, was in Arizona for a long time. And, but now I'm in, now I'm in Hawaii. Um, so, but yeah. anyways. That, that's the short and condensed version, Ginger. <laughs> well, okay, maybe you can do a little bit better. Okay, I'm well, going to give you two minutes for an extension. <laughs> okay. Well, well, let me ask. Let me ask Sunny this. That, this this will help. Uh, you know, for those who are watching, you know, Sunny's my uh, my brother-in-law, and uh, I've been fascinated with Sunny's story because, like Sunny, you know, I grew up like you, Ginger, here in American Samoa. I went to elementary school here, then 
left and came back after many years. And, uh, you know, Sonny's following a similar, similar path. But uh, he went down the path of computer science. And, uh, you know, the, the whole discussion around broadband uh, is really why I wanted to reach out to Sonny and, and bring him on and talk a little bit about, uh, um, you know, his, his story. But Sonny, if you can share with, uh, with Ginger and I and uh, our audience, um, what made you decide to go down that path uh, of computer science and eventually uh, get into software engineering? Okay, sounds good. Um... And thanks for that clarification, because I was like wondering, okay, there's so many ways I can go with this. And then <laughs> just 10 minutes okay. later, no useful information. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I know you, we got to keep you focused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, like, well, one thing, you know, I was, before this call, I was thinking about like, yeah, what was I really interested in? But I, one thing I realized about myself is I was always like curious about how things worked. Um, when I was a kid, like, you know, I was always playing with Legos and, <clears throat> um, one time I took apart like my radio cause I was trying to just look inside and see all the moving parts. And then when I was trying to put it all back together again, like, you know, it just wasn't recognizable and some things didn't even work anymore. So, <laughs> but you know, I always did, did stuff like that. Like, um, and then I remember in high school one time I was like, thought I was really good with, you know, installing stereos. And I told my dad, Oh, let me put in one of those speakers in your, in your truck, like to make the bass sound louder. And then, but I didn't really have that much experience. <laughs> right. So I went and bought a bass speaker but it was like an oval one, like a six by nine. And he had like a, a circle, a circular, not an oval shape, but I never thought about the shape. And then, but after I ripped the whole panel off, like, and you know, you're supposed to like bring the panel off nicely. And that, cause the clips that go back in, you know, like I ended up snapping them off. So like the panel wouldn't go back in. I had to like tape it. And anyways, like and the speaker never fit because it was the wrong size. And my, like my dad, I you know, basically screwed up his car. Right. So, um, but doing things like that, <clears throat> And I was always curious, but the computer, you know, like, um, like right around the time I was in like a freshman in high school, I think the internet was just reaching Samoa and, and, you know, just using the internet and using the computer. Like it was something that like, you couldn't just look at and see how it worked, you know, like a car, you can see a, you know, wheel, you see the engine, you know, these are moving for a house, like you have a frame, but a computer, like you can't just look at it and be like, Oh yeah, that's how it works. So I think, and because of my curiosity of always like wanting to know how things work, kind of drove me in that direction. And then plus when the internet came out and I knew that how people were like gravitating to it, I knew that would be like a secure field to go into because, you know, it was just kind of booming at that time. And I was like, oh, if I figure out how this works and get in that, that field that, you know, I'll probably have like, you know, just some kind of job security or something. So, and that's eventually like kind of what, you know, channeled me into that, that industry, I guess. Mm -hmm. Now, do you, uh, you know, go ahead, uh, go ahead, Ginger, sorry. Yeah, so do you see many Samoans in your line of work currently? Um, I've seen a few. Um, I think the one, you know, I got a cousin actually that um, went to U of A. I went to ASU, and he, he does the same thing I do. He's a software engineer. and um, but Not too many, but there are, you know, um, some out there. I, you know, when I was working at the, the, the voters' um, office there in Samoa. This was a long time ago, but I got to meet some of the guys and. um the IT over there and, you know, they, you know, they were doing all kinds of stuff with software and using access database. And one of the guys that worked there actually like uh, recorded music on, um, uh, I forget one of the like, like Apple tunes or so I forget the name or fruity loops is what he called it. Yeah. That was the name of the, the mixing software, but anyway, yeah, but uh, some, a few people that, you know, I've met that are, um, you know, working in the in industry, um, but not, but not, a, but not a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. And that's, you know, that's a, it's a good point because, you know, uh, uh, one of the concerns or one of the complaints you get from business owners and, you know, uh, leaders of organizations here uh, is the absence of uh, qualified, uh, you know, personnel to do a number of things from network uh, work uh, and, to developing, uh, you know, software and applications. You know, one of the uh, priorities I think that uh, we're going to continue to focus on through this broadband strategy initiative, Ginger, is being able to improve, you know, government services. And one way to do that uh, is through automating many of the uh, services that are, you know, community facing. Uh, and so being able to program or software engineer, you know, a, a, an app uh, or a tool that uh, can be used to do that, it's, it's you know, it's going to be required, it's going to be necessary. And so, you know, bringing the conversation back to Sunny, uh, Sunny, so as a software engineer and as a, uh, you know, a local 
Um, how do you see your skill set lining up with some of the needs that uh, you know we need here back at home? Um, well, if anything, I could like help mentor um, products that, that, you know, or build software that I have experience building or like similar types of platforms and stuff. But um, yeah, but what, you know, I mean, that's, yeah, pretty much a mentor, mentor in a mentoring or consulting type of role. But, you know, with the, the new cable and stuff, I can see, like you're saying, there's going to be a lot of needs. And I think it opens up, yeah, that opportunity for a lot of people to, especially, I mean, this is kind of off topic, but like, you know, other uh, work in the mainland as well, right? So um, to bring, you know, um, just that work back home with the with the speed that you guys have through that cable. So, um Yes, right, so, right. So, and um, Ginger, this is, uh, you know, if I may, this, this is a conversation that Sonny and I have had, you know, uh, you know, Sonny's a, a young dad, he's got a family there, two beautiful niece, uh, nieces of mine, daughters of his, and uh, one son. So they have a, a family. And so he's kind of stuck there in Hawaii for a little while. He's married to a local girl in Hawaii. But, uh, you know, we've talked about um, uh, not not only him, but the vast number of Samoans living in the US who want to come back home to work and it's become uh, a reality now a possibility now with uh, the internet speeds you know being able to telework from american samoa and still earn uh, a mainland you know uh, uh, scaled uh, salary and, and have a career uh, as sunny in, in your industry are you seeing telework and remote remote work uh you know changing especially since COVID 19 and uh, what are your thoughts about you know this being one of the a conduit to bring some of our people back home yeah, uh, well, uh, right now, the company that I work for, and it all just depends on the company culture, like some companies, their culture is they like the in-person, you know, people to be there at the office, and then other companies, they have like a more mature uh, remote culture. So um, just so happens that where I work, um, like uh, the director is like pro remote work. So um, a lot of the guys that get hired on, they don't even, they, they never meet in person, like the entire interview process is done, you know, like this over the internet. And then, um, you know, and then you just start working over, um, you know, using your cable connection or your internet connection. And, you know, cause all the work when you're, when you get into building software, like <clears throat> it resides somewhere else, like the code the server, it all resides in some other physical location and not necessarily where you work at either. Right. So it's all in the cloud. And, and so basically when you're working, like, you know, you're checking in code or, pushing stuff in, it's all done on remote machines. And as long as you have an internet connection, um, you can do that stuff. But the fast connection really helps when you have like a lot of them require meetings, right? So mm -hmm. usually have several meetings during the day, just like this. And, and that's like, I think where the quality, you know, the fast connection really allows you to be a part of those, you know, meetings. And it's not like, Oh, this guy you know, has a bad connection. Now, how is he getting his work done or, you know, things like that. But yeah, and it just kind of brings, Everybody, it's fair game now for, to me, like to be an American Samoa and have any of these jobs were working remotely. And so like we have a company I work for has a, a mature remote culture, but there's a lot of companies, I have friends that work for companies that they're, they were like a, you know, you had to show there, physically be there, um, show up, physically be at the office. And um, because of the, co because of COVID now, a lot of them are, you know, like one friend of mine, my close friend, um, his company choice hotels, like they decide their entire it staff. Um, they had them, they're not supposed to return to work until January of like next year. So like mm. everybody's remote. So, and then, right. you know, just talking amongst friends or whatever, like, it's like, okay, if you have this company, you know, if it's, you know, if they have a thousand employees, they're probably paying a lot of money for rents, like real estate and stuff. So right. I can just imagine now that people are seeing, well, everybody's remote, but we're still, you know, the company is still operating. But now we, you know, we don't really need to pay for this rental bill or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. for this space that we can operate without people being in this space. You know, I can, I, right. I can imagine more companies kind of leaning towards just, you know, the remote, um, you know, um, just the aspect of, you know, yeah, making that, that work their, culture. Exactly. Yeah, I know uh, yesterday uh, or a couple of days ago, Google had made the announcement that uh, their entire staff will continue to work remote until uh, I think it was July of next year, if I remember correctly. Wow. And so, you know, you certainly expect a company like Google, a tech company, to uh, to be at the forefront of, you know, that sort of cultural uh, shift at the workplace. But I, I would imagine that many more companies are now realizing that uh, there there's a potential, uh, um, 
uh, a business uh, motive for, yeah. you know, uh, I think most people kind of recognized it, but uh, this, this uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic has certainly opened a lot of eyes uh, for business owners and for, you know, organizations uh, in general as to how you can be more efficient, more profitable uh, uh, of an organization and, you know, uh, continue to create value for your stakeholders um, by utilizing, you know, technology like, uh, like what we're using today. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, so I, I'll just follow up with a question um, with that. So do you think that there are business opportunities in this field for entrepreneurs who live in American Samoa? Oh yeah, for sure. I think, you know, um, you know, the cable and, you know, this, just what's going on right now with companies realizing that, you know, they can operate, you know, with you know, or just having resources that you know that don't have to be physically in the office, it's going. Yeah, it's it's just having that mindset. You know, everybody's fair game. And then I think the thing is with like you know in in Samoa, it's American Samoa. It's still kind of like the U.S. territory under the the U.S. kind of blanket. So, mm -hmm. and a lot of comp you know when companies have to hire you know. India or or outsource their work to India because a lot of times they outsource to you know save money right it's because it's cheaper the cost of labor is cheaper in India and then the cost of labor is cheaper in just other countries but I think you know they're also 12 hours I think ahead or behind like so mm -hmm. in order to communicate with them like you have to be up at night right but American Samoa is, is just like you know it's what an hour away from Hawaii time Hawaii standard time and then it's what like a, an hour or two or Pacific right? Depending on the daylight savings. So it's like the time zone's a lot better. And then everybody, you know, mm -hmm. the, like, I would imagine just speaks, you know, better English than somebody from India, you know, right. like, and I think it just, it makes it a lot easier, I think, to get into that industry. Like, and if I think if people were trying to get into that industry of like, you know, remote services, like, I don't know, software, people were trained up or like if they had resources that moved home to, you know, do software development or some type of IT work or, you know, I mean, I think the cable mm -hmm. totally opens that door up for, you know, people that want to move home and then people that are home that want to just build their skills locally because you don't need to actually go. There's a lot of online colleges and, and all the information's online. So you don't really need to actually go anywhere to, to learn how to do this stuff, you know. All right. It's uh, become a, uh, it, well, we have been a global community for some while, but man, uh, you know, things, uh, our perspectives have really changed since uh, since the uh, the pandemic uh, you know uh, broke out earlier this year. <clears throat> I I do like your comment about you know with Kawaiki and with this broadband burst, um, American Samoa is now fair game, right? That we can bring things to American Samoa and we can broadcast things. So that's now a two way uh, avenue for us. Um, yep. Yeah, so I, I really, really like that. So I, I, um, what, what message do you have for young people in American Samoa, you know, about pursuing a career in computer science and, or software engineering? And, and where, where can they take that? Where can they take their skills, right? So now that American Samoa is a two-way street, we're, we're in the fast highway now, right? Right, yeah. Super highway. <laughs> Super highway. <Exactly. laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it, that's the, I mean, it really, there's no excuse, you know, now to not be able to, to do what, I mean, whatever you want, like, you know, like the, it's, you're limited to yourself and your own creativity, like how far you want to push yourself, because, you know, like, if you want to pursue computer science, you know, and that's just like learning how to write code to build software applications, like it could just be like a website, or it could be, you know, like the Zoom app that we're using, or it could be like on your mobile phone, like any one of those apps. Um, and that's what I do. I, I mean, I currently, I've kind of been through the gamut a little bit, but now I'm like just doing mobile applications. So on your iPhone or your, or on your Android device. So, but yeah, I mean, to learn how to do that stuff, you, it's the information's like I said, it's like it's all online, you know, and you, you can just Google like, oh, you know, how do, um, how do I build an iPhone app, you know? And then you'll probably see like 10 tutorials show up, you know, and, and that's what I actually did to like learn how to build a mobile app was like, I was building like stuff for websites. And then I was like, well, I went and just found a tutorial. And then I told myself, you know, I'm just going to build an app and then get it on the app store. 
and then build an Android app and put it on a Google Play. So, and I was just forcing myself to like learn how to do that. I was already done with school and doing something else, but I had learned this stuff on the side, you know, like mm-hmm. just Googling and just like anybody can do at home. And, um, and once they figure out how to do it, then you, you know, and, and then you got an app on the store, then you can just go to a company and be like, Oh, you guys need a mobile developer. Like I have two apps on the store. And then you, you just find the right fit until like you get your first, you know, your first actual job doing that, you know, and kind of like slowly build up your skill set. And then next thing you know, after five years, you know, you, you probably can get more pay. You can, you know, you can go from working at like, you know, uncle Joe's to like working at Google or something like that, you know, being one of their mobile devs and those guys, they probably make a pretty good salary, you know? Yeah. You would, uh, you know, living here on the Island and making a salary, uh, you know, a Google, scaled salary would uh man you'd be living in paradise you'd be living the big life yeah you'd, yeah. be, looking, you'd be living in one of those uh follies like the one behind you <laughs> oh yeah. yeah with an absolutely. antenna on the top now oh, with the, with yeah. the, straight to the satellite yes you have your yeah. own dish on top of that <laughs> yeah that'd probably be one I, I, uh... <laughs> hey ginger i just wanted to comment i i think uh sunny's message is is great especially for the uh uh, not only parents, you know, the parents are listening to hopefully, uh, but for the young kids out there uh, or young folks, you know, there, there really is no, uh, limitation now to, uh, going after, uh, you know, uh, whatever it is that you're, you're, or you're planning or dreaming of, of doing, you know, it's, it's attainable. Um, obviously there are going to be challenges, uh, along the way, but, uh, you know, we're t- we're experiencing an entirely new uh, landscape here in American Samoa because of Hawaii and the broadband, uh, significantly improved broadband access we have. And so, uh, you know, thanks, Sonny, for uh, for sharing that story. I think uh, I hope it. Well, I know it'll resonate with the, with the, a lot of people. Um, and again, we're just breaching the tip of the iceberg with this discussion, Ginger, about you know what can be done, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, thanks again for sharing that, Sonny. Yeah, no problem. Bill. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. So I, I took away a lot too from this conversation, right? So just what resonates with young people. No, no more excuses, right? So no excuses and that curiosity to keep the curiosity going. And I like right. your story, your story, story earlier on about trial and error, right? So keep doing that. It's okay. It's okay to fail. Just right. try something else. So trial and error. Try trial and error. And then the last thing is to stay motivated, right? That was like some of the, the, the key things that pushed you um, from your education and then all the way through to career and to what you're doing now. It's self-motivation, right? So you got to stay the course and then keep motivating yourself, taking initiative to do other things like creating an app as a side thing that you're doing. It wasn't even your primary focus at the time. So I think these are really great examples uh, for our young people and our audience uh, to just keep going, right? Now that you have this resource, this Hawaii Cable, uh, there's so many things we can do. Um, so I think that's, um, uh, I want to give it to Sunny one last time for any final thoughts and a, a message of encouragement for our audience. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, I just think that, um, you know, this cable and having this, the speed, it, it really is, um, it opens up doors, you know? So, um, it's, if you have any interest or in the line of it or even making videos or, you know, where this could be, um, like a doorway that helps you get somewhere, then definitely, you know, take advantage of it. And, you know, like trial and error, right? Don't be afraid to fail because you're just going to keep on learning from your mistakes and, you know, you just evolve and become better at what you do. And yeah, so yeah, don't, don't be afraid <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, take advantage of it. So it's a, it's a wonderful resource, you know? Yes, right. I agree. So with that, Thank you so much, Sunny. I mean, Michael and I, this is also trial and error for us, the Coco Bites. Right. Is, you know, Show number what? Yeah. Three or four? <laughs> yeah. <is> number four. <laughs> we're, you know, just, we said just, you know. Just going to do it. Sink, sink or swim. Sink or swim. Yeah. That's what it is. So, but we're, we're doing it. So with that, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we hope to get you on again next time. And then we hope to see you and family in American Samoa.
Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I'd we'll, we'll love to. <laughs> and thank you guys again for the opportunity to be on your show. And I really enjoyed watching them and I look forward to, to more. I thought that was a great conversation with Sunny and where his story came from as from Matafao, boohoo, you know, because I'm from hey, the I went to of Matafao the island. Too. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Alofao Elementary. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, yeah, but just, you know, homegrown products, right? So all of us, all yeah. of you, yeah. me, Sunny, homegrown products is, you know, what I, I'm kind of proud of where we are and just that conversation we just had. Uh, it's motivating. Yeah. It's 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 young people talking and and finding solutions. So I mm -hmm. thought that was great. Yeah, no, it, it's uh, yeah, it was a great conversation. Of course, it's always nice to catch up with my uh, my little brother, you know, Sonny. <laughs> yes. But uh, yeah, no, it's you know that generation. You know, he's he's ten years younger than me, and uh, you know there are. Uh, up and comers, you know, younger than Sonny, obviously, that are making their way. They're eager to, you know, find their own uh, path in life. And, uh, you know, Sonny's story, I think, is is uh, one that I, I thought we should, you know, tap into and share so that, uh, you know, our young people can realize that, uh, you know, they can go to Pongo Elementary, they can go to Matafao, they can mm -hmm. go to Samoana and graduate. <laughs> You know, we're all products of the American Samoa education system and then go off and continue to pursue your goals and your passions. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the change in, in, I guess, in everything really because of uh, uh, the Internet and uh, the rapidly evolving telecommunications industry um, really opens up tremendous opportunities for young people. And so being able to, I know if Sonny can talk forever, you know, we've had these talks that go all night. Right. And so, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, um, keeping it to, to, uh, you know, our time, time limit, um, uh, is of course a challenge, but I, I hope people see and hear that same message that, you know what, if, if Sonny can do it, if you mm -hmm. can do it, if I can, if we, you know, we all have our own stories, but let's pass that message along to our young folks and have them, you know, take an interest or help them, uh, uh take an interest. You know, in the STEM field, something in technology, and uh, that all eventually ties back to the internet. Yep, absolutely. Um, you know, I continue to to resonate with a lot of things that he said, right, about fair game. Now we're all at this this level playing field with the rest of the world. No more excuses. Uh, we build opportunities for ourselves. Let's market ourselves. You know, all of these types of things, right? Mm -hmm. so it requires... Yes, it's a lot of, it's hard work, definitely. Um, yeah. But it's also a challenge for us. And I see on social media, a lot of talented and skillful people that are, are, are putting their, their skills to work, you know, creating those videos, creating all these different things that can make American Samoa marketable. Um, right. So, you know, and this is a tool that we have now that, I go back to the no more excuses, no more, you know, we're all, you know, I go right back to that. I like that. I like that. I was like, okay, so this, this definitely, you know, challenges. Let's, let's keep on moving. Let's keep jugging. Right. So that's why I, I had to say, yes, this Cocoa Bite show is we're going to do it either way, sink <laughs> or swim, whether we have a professional production group or not, we're just going to do it because we have a right. story to tell. We have something to share. So that's that's it. I'm not going to say any more of that. You've got me all fired up now. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like that. The fire is great. That's what we're looking for. You know, but uh, one, one final comment, you know, uh, from the Department of Commerce uh, and our point of view here, you know, part of our mandate is to create an environment uh, that uh, helps uh, to create jobs, right? And, and you know, uh, with a strong and growing economy, you know, all, all uh, you know, rising tide, right, raises all ships. And so... Um, the, the uh, Governor Lolo's administration, Astaka, and everybody involved with making this become a reality. Uh, uh, again, and I said this before, I, I, I may sound like a broken record. You know, uh, the hard work is done, and and it comes back to all right, what what's next? Mm -hmm. And you know, going back to our launch, you know, that was the question posed to all of us by uh, Director Lafayette: What's next? What what do we do next? And so, you know, if it's creating content. Uh, you know, and, and marketing it via your YouTube channel. That's great. If it's, uh, you know, uh, you know, getting a certification online so that now you can uh, create apps and upload them to the Apple store, to the Google Play store, so you can then make money that way. You know, the, the opportunities uh, are numerous. We just have not begun to count them off and line them up so that uh, 
so we know what they are. And that's part of what we, what we hope to accomplish with this broadband strategy is to be able to, again, lay out a very clear roadmap um, on how you can do these things and achieve these, these, uh, these things as well. So, yeah, no, I love the energy, Ginger. It's great. <laughs> All pumped let's, up. <laughs> let's, let's keep it going. That's what it is, right? So keep the conversations going. Keep the fire burning. Keep young people engaged. Keep the people of American Samoa informed of all of these things. So, and that's, you know, kind yeah, right. of what we're trying to do with Cocoa Bites. So keep our Absolutely. cup of Cocoa Samoa full, right? And rich of these ideas and innovations and creativity. Right. That's what we try to accomplish. Um, right. So with that, thank you very much for today. Um, now we're all, you know, gung ho and ready to <laughs> take on the next challenge. So thank you very much for joining us on this segment of Coco Bites, where we keep your cup of Coco Samoa full and rich of innovations and creativity in American Samoa's tech community. Tofasoifua. <laughs>